Good day, everyone. Paul Lawrence Van, host of Wealth Academy Podcast, and glad that you could be with us today. Episode 262. We have none other than Rovan Dion. And the thing about this is that he is a gifted individual. And now I want to share that with you. I want to first of all welcome him, and then I'll go into his bio as we normally do. So put your safety belts on because we're about to go into outer space. Rovan Dion, good day. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing great, Paul. How are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing absolutely wonderful and just having a great time. I look forward to talking to you. Rovan and I have spoken a couple of times prior to this interview, and uh, he just has done some amazing things and continues to this day. So before we get started, I want to just share a little bit about his bio, and we'll go from there. It's going to be exciting, so get ready. Now, Rovan is an international best-selling author, and he's a guiding light in the field of transformational and personal development with an illustrious career spanning over three decades. His journey has been characterized by a deep commitment to personal growth and development, both as a practitioner and as an educator. Now, Rovan Dion is certified by the state of New York as a real estate instructor and loves teaching everything about real estate. And in 2004, Rovan's dedication to education and financial literacy education was recognized by the United Federation of Teachers with the prestigious Outstanding Educator Award for Career and Technical Education. And he's been doing this for over two decades of exceptional contributions to the field. And I tell you, he's done even more than that. And we're going to get into that during this interview. So, Rovan, welcome to the show again. This episode is all about you, my friend. And uh, let's talk about your backstory and what your experience was like growing up. It's always good to familiarize the audience with your background because it really sets the platform for everything. Wow, my background. I am just a humble little boy from Louisiana. And actually where I grew up was in northern Louisiana. And the place that I grew up was so small, Paul, that it wasn't even a town. They called it a village because there were so few people there. So you just never know where you're going to end up in life, no matter where you are, who you are. You just don't know what the future holds for you. Yes. Yes, that's very interesting. And from a wonderful state, uh, every time I think about Louisiana, the state itself, I think about the music and I think about the food. And of course, I think about the amazing people from there. Yes. And uh, so it's great to have you here as you share part of that experience growing up and uh, look forward to learning even more. Now, let's talk about the fact that uh, families have golden rules in their home. For example, the parents. Uh, in your <laughs> words, what were some of those pillars your parents had for you and your siblings? You know, for us growing up, uh, you know, my parents are old school. So for us, it was it was literally, uh, you, well, the things you see now, you definitely don't talk back to your parents. So it was always respect. <laughs> yes. Respect was always a big thing in my household. And, uh, you know, keeping a, a spick and span house, you know, we had chores mm -hmm. to do. So it was always responsibilities. Um, and one of the things that I know my parents really instilled in me that even today I follow is a very strong worth ethic. Yes. Um, my grandfather was also a sharecropper. So, you know, we pick peas and watermelons oh, and yeah. cucumbers. Like we had a whole big ado with all of that. So just growing up, you know, waking up early, getting to work, it's just like you just create this discipline in you. And I, I actually thank them for that. Yes. And I tell you, you're taking me down memory lane, and I know a lot of other people who are listening and those who are listening on the archive and that. For the younger generation, they may not know what that is, but we want to let them know it was real. It was real. <laughs> it was indeed, real indeed. indeed. <laughs> so thank you for that. So I mentioned earlier in your bio that you're into real estate, but not only just real estate, but in real estate investing. What inspired you to lean into this particular industry, which we know is one that's good, even in a hyperinflationary economy like we're in now? Please share how that, who and who and or what inspired you to get into real estate investing. Yeah, real estate investing is, is kind of something that's near and dear uh, to my heart. And you know, my family is into real estate. 
Okay. Uh, that's one thing. And so as a child growing up, you know, they had all these board games that you could uh, play. And one of my favorite games at that time was none other than Monopoly. Ah, nice. And, you know, because, you know, we were in the country and we only had like two channels, <laughs> that was a lot of time to you learn. You got a lot of ears with some uh, foil on it. <laughs> exactly. There you go. Real TV. So you had, so you had a lot of time to play and imagine, and you know, I think it was sparked even back then. You know, yeah. just playing this, you know, m Monopoly game. So much so to the point now, as an educator, I actually. Uh, just wrote a curriculum of teaching students how to invest into real estate through Monopoly. Um, and, you know, for myself, you know, as years uh -huh. go by, I've always been fascinated by real estate, knowing how important that it, that it is. Because when I first came to New York, a lot of people don't know this backstory. But when I came to New York, I really didn't have a place to live. Yeah. I was just following my passions and following my dreams. And, you know, sometimes I slept on park benches and subways. Sure. And so I know the importance of actually having a place to live. So that's number one. Yeah. And, you know, number two is that, you know, when it comes to, you know, creating that generational wealth, uh -huh. you know, that's nothing that's more profound than real estate. And yeah. so, you know, I just know that uh, as a community, you know, we really have to get part, uh, be part of this conversation. And I just kind of wanted to just do that to really spark the conversation, have a real good foundation in doing that, and then moving people through that journey of actually owning property. Yes. Yes. A lot of people could do this in terms of real estate investing, but they don't know. They don't know. And so what you're doing is providing them with a platform in which to better understand it, yes. uh, which I think is really great. But that's that's quite a journey there on that rough side of the mountain, going to New York, not having a place to stay, uh, being on park benches. And people think, well, that's not real. It's real. <laughs> it's yeah. real. That's real. I mean, you, you're, you're right there on the, the man on the street, man about town, and you've transitioned from that to where you are now, which is really amazing. Yeah. So let's talk about your book. Now you're an international best-selling author and the title of your book is Zero to Hero, The Ultimate Guide for Over 40 Investor. So we want to uh, help people to better understand that. And by the way, we're gonna add this uh, chart here so that yeah. they can see it and learn even more. So if you would uh, talk a bit about your book there. Robot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, this book came about once again because of all of my life experiences. And I, as you see on the screen you're seeing right now, there's actually three books. And right. what tends to happen for me is like wherever I am most focused on in life right now is I tend to write a book about it these days. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is kind of like where like where I am. I just I just looked around and just saw, you know, once I became a certified instructor in New York as far as teaching real estate, right. I noticed something that was very profound. And that was that a lot of that we weren't part of the conversation. Yeah, you have some people that are into real estate, but I noticed as a community, we're not a part of the larger conversations, you know, getting into real estate, becoming developers and those sort of things. And because I work in New York City, yes. you know, um, I see a lot of gentrification going on. Oh, yeah. And the reason, and the, I, I do believe this, the only reason that that actually is happening is because you know, we think we're going to have this property, uh, you know, we're going to get old or grandma gets old or whatever, and then we're going to sell it and then we're, gonna, we're out of here. Right. But the crazy thing about this area in New York, what I found is that once you sell it, that's the end of the line. Yeah. You can't, you, come back in. you, can't, you can't, you're locked out. You, you're there's locked no out. way that you're going to be able to afford a $2 million property going back into those waters so it's kind of like well whoa this is just not right and it's all because we just really don't get a sure. lot of us that you know the power of investing into real estate and holding on to the investment watching yeah. it grow keeping it into the family and then just pass that down to generations generation after generation yeah. so yeah, this is that that was one of the big impetus of actually writing the book uh, outside of also, you know, a lot of times when people, I saw a lot of people getting certified to become real estate agents okay. and not really realizing that they're actually opening up 
a business. It's a business and you're working on your own. You and and they don't really teach you about investing when you become a real estate investor. Uh, when you when you're studying real estate so this book kind of give you that quick little foundation and it is paul it's a short read it's less than 100 pages right yeah but, so, but enough to give you uh, enough information to at least get started yeah it is it is it is right. short and compact what that foundation that you need uh i even do some mind uh set work towards the end of the book to get your mindset correct um and then just to have you to just just go for it, man. Just, yeah. just, just swing for the fences. And you just mentioned one of the strategy, buy and hold. Buy and hold. As that is hold one of the strategies. As opposed to flipping or, or mm -hmm. another strategy as well. But you're absolutely right. Uh, I always tell people and what I've read is that they're, they're not making any more land. So when you, when you put that house on it, then that's yours. That's why land is very valuable. And that land underneath that property is valuable, too. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, that's your land from the center of the earth all the way up into the heavens. That's your piece of the world. Absolutely. Yeah. And of course, you can get Rovan's books on Amazon. Just go to Amazon or Amazon Books and look for Rovan Dion, and you'll be able to see this book and his additional books as well. The next one is titled You Already Have It, which is a survival guide for life and the So Hum Grateful Journal to create an attitude of gratitude in just five minutes a day. And that can, you can get that on Amazon as well. And I believe that people who are listening to this, these books can help you. But if you want to build wealth and have legacy, uh, go and get this real estate book. It will really make a tremendous difference for you and your family. There's nothing better than legacy. Ah, so perfect. <laughs> so perfect. Absolutely. So perfect. So perfect. So Rovan, let's talk about your target market when it comes to you and assisting people, not only with your book, but also with more of the real estate investing uh, expertise that you have. Who is your target market uh, when it comes to uh, the business model and how do you best serve them? OK, great. So when you begin to look at the books that I've written, uh, as you can see, you know, not only being a best selling author, um, and we've been fortunate enough to be three times three times best-selling yeah. author. So that's really oh, great. Uh, but one of the things that that's key is you can see that I'm an educator and a results coach. Yes. Right. And, you know, I never know sometimes where my people are going to show up. I will True. tell you if they if you're really interested in getting into real estate uh, to make that transition, uh, to be coached around that, to learn more about that, then, of course, that would be for those people. Yeah. Um, but as an educator, I will tell you that I I have people that may show up and as you as you begin to read the bio, they I'd never know sometimes where they're coming from. But that's when the results coaching comes in, because yeah. it doesn't matter where you where you show up from, because as a result coach, I can coach you through anything that you actually want to accomplish. And that's one of my superpowers. Oh, wonderful. I like that. I also want to share with our listeners, both live and on the archive is uh, that Rovan's mentorship and coaching have been pivotal, pivotal for vice president at some of the world's largest banks, educators, brain surgeons, and entertainers from ghostwriters to celebrities. And he has guidance has touched the lives of lawyers, Grammy nominated artists, filmmakers, and speech writers for presidents, as well as heads of states of Africa, showcasing his versatility and profound impact across various industries globally so uh, he has done it all people <laughs> now at this point now i'm gonna go a little bit off script here but uh let's talk a little bit about other books that you're considering writing i, I believe you mm. have some coming in as fiction as well ah. a little bit about that but paul i am so excited about uh this thing and one of the things as uh, your audience begin to hear one of the messages that i always like to tell the audience that that are listening uh i really firmly believe that you do not have to be painted in a box and you have to do this one thing right you can show up and have it all any way you want you can create your life any way that you want and one of the things that I've been doing, I actually have two books that I was able to create this last past year. Um, one is a children's book. 
of course, going to be an educator. So that's going to be my first children's book, already written and just ready to be illustrated at this point. Uh, it's already been translated into Spanish already. And it's basically a, about Dazzle the Dragon. Uh -huh. I love, by the way, I love dragons. Uh, that's, dragons again, cool. my childhood, dragons is my thing. I love dragons. So I wrote a book, a children's book, Dazzle the Dragon. It just basically mm -hmm. teaches uh, the kids about uh, numbers and shapes. He goes mm -hmm. on this adventure. He has these little friends, forest friends, and he flies around and teaches them about that. I just thought that would be really great. Because See, they're, I, acquiring, they're acquiring knowledge. They're acquiring knowledge. Of yeah. That's the educator in me, right? Absolutely. And then one of the things that uh, also um, I really love doing as uh, my grandmother would always take me to the grocery store and they used to have the comic books for 25 cents. Oh, yeah, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> we were rich back then. Yeah, that was rich, man. I'm telling you. And my grandmother would always buy me these comic books and she and, and I would always buy the superheroes, of course. That's my thing. Yeah. That's my other weakness, superheroes. So now I'm writing my first fiction book um that i'm going to be working on last about a year and a half ago almost two years ago i i, I traced my african lineage and okay. found out that uh my tribe is from uh cameroon cameroon gotcha uh, right uh the mafa tribe and yeah. so they live near the northern part of cameroon near the mandera mountains and yeah. so i don't know about anyone else but when i when i really saw black panther for yeah. the very first time, it kind of messed me up. Uh -huh. And the reason that it messed me up because it was one of the few times that I actually had a chance to see a, a superhero who looked like me done at such a high quality level with yeah. such dignity and it just floored me. Empowering. It just floored me, Paul, just knocked me right off my seat. And I said, why can't we see more of this? Yes. And That's so, based on all the things that i just shared i decided you know what i have the power for that to happen so now i'm i i've already written the book already where the it's us uh, we have heroes happening wow. out of the adventures of the the mandera mountains of cameroon ah very nice and it is straight you know harry potter feel you know there's going to be a series of the book i'm already starting to crack the second series of the book. Um, and my goal there, Paul, is to turn that book into e either a, a television series it or like streaming it. like Netflix or have it to be a movie so yeah. that we can share these adventures. So that's a pretty big, big, big goal and dream. But that's the only way to play. I agree. I totally agree. I tell people, if you're not thinking big and it won't scare you, <laughs> then you need to dream bigger. That's right. <laughs> you need That's to shake right. your boots is what I tell people. Yes. But that is, uh, you have to be commended for that. And I look forward to the first running of that movie and, our, <laughs> and put in the cartoon book as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Now, there's something else I want the audience to know, and it's about your other talents and your other gifts. And I know that you have been a part of this choreography. I want you to share something ah. more with that because a lot of people may not know about this, but they should because it is something that's powerful. Wow. Thank you so much, Paul, for actually uh, introducing that part of my life. As I always say, you don't have to be this one thing. Yes. And, you know, those early days of coming to New York, following your dreams, no matter what, no matter the fear, no matter what it's going to look like, I came to New York to follow a dream. And that dream was to become a professional dancer and choreographer. And right. so I, I didn't want to go to a regular college at that time to do dance. Uh, sure. I said, I'm going to go to a place where I know they do it the best. Yeah. Uh, all day long, I wanted to dance. And I knew I had to immerse myself to that level. So I auditioned for the Alvin Ailey School of Dance mm -hmm. and was accepted to the Alvin Ailey School of Dance. And and once I up on graduation, uh, uh, they they had me to go on a scholarship. But one thing that really was profound was that I began to do some personal early personal development work. Okay. Purely by accident, going to a bookstore in Columbus Circle, if you know New York City. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, and there was this little store called the Coliseum Bookstore, mm -hmm. and I went into that bookstore 
totally by accident. And then I went to this, this place called the self-help section. Like, <laughs> what the <laughs> heck <laughs> is that? How do you um, do that? <laughs> uh, like what what is that? It was like so I, I went and I picked up a book called Personal Power by Tony Robbins. Uh -huh. I have and that. my and my life was instantaneously changed within within a year. Within a year, I had uh not only graduated from there from Alvin Ailey School of Dance, but I also began to to choreograph for the Alvin Ailey Company. Okay. Because of that transformational personal development work. And so one of the things that I will share with your audience, if you really want your life to just really rock, personal development is the way to go. And I noticed, I didn't even know I had stumbled upon this great thing, Paul, because I, I immersed myself into Tony's work. And when I was immersing that work, I noticed that my life just totally rocked out. I mean, everything was happening. I could see uh -huh. things differently. I was creating things that were bigger. And then all of a sudden, when I found out that I wasn't immersed in that, my life just kind of like went flat. It's uh -huh. like, whoa, what is this? That's gotta be power in this personal development thing. For and sure. so like now for the last over over 30 years, I've been into personal development and that's what I offer my my people um, in, in my teaching to my students. And as a coach, I bring in the personal development aspect of it. Um, and, you know, that's one thing that I really advise anyone to do is just work on self, because who's better than you <laughs> to work, work on you, self. It goes right back to what you said earlier. Robon, and that's this, you've got to think big. And then after you think big, you have to take action. Yes, absolutely. Without action step, it doesn't work. <laughs> I mean, that's true. So you, you had quite an accomplishment. And again, that spirit of Louisiana is what resonated with me because all the amazing artists from that area. And so you became a part of that at your at your own level with that dancing with Alvin. Alan, I, you know Alvin Ailey. I mean? Yeah, Alvin yeah. Ailey. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. And so uh, you took yours to that next level. And is that something like one of your wildest dreams that you never thought that that's something you'd be doing? I didn't. I, I really didn't. I, 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 my counselor, Malcolm Stevens, uh, sure. at a high school, uh, who's no longer with us, but bless his heart, he was like my mentor, um, best man at my wedding. I mean, this guy was phenomenal. Great. Um, took me under his wing and he, I remember being in high school and he showed us a film uh -huh. of Alvin Ailey and it was Revelations and it was with Judith Jamison and Cry oh, yeah. and all this. And I was like, whoa, what is this? Oh my goodness. For the young oh. folks out there, if you've never heard of these people, look them up. <laughs> oh, legend, 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 legend. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, you know what? That's what I wanted to do. And so I followed that dream, Paul. I, listen, when you begin to follow something that big, and one of the things I would also like to share is that sure. you don't have to know how that's going right. to happen. You just have to start dreaming that and start taking consistent action towards that goal. And you're going to see certain things just emerge. It's kind of like stepping off the cliff. And just when you're about to take that, 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 that leap off, that right. next step appears for you to land on. Uh -huh. And so my, going back to, um, you know, having my book to be a movie or a television series, sure. Paul, I have no idea how that's going to happen, but I'm willing to play that game. Why? Because that's exciting. Yes. Yes. That's it's exciting. It it's out of forward. my comfort zone. I have no idea how that's going to happen. And one of the things, if you're into personal development, one of the things of the jobs of the subconscious mind is that they figure it figures out the how. Yes, yes, absolutely. Actually, when you're asleep, it's figuring things out. It's figuring things out. <laughs> absolutely. That is tremendous. So congratulations on that. And I'll definitely be following you on that. Thank so you. when we look at uh, the future, let's say two years, three years down the road, and we have the movie out, and I'm sitting at the mm. theater with my popcorn, <laughs> you and the family, and... Um, what else do you have uh, on your your docket, on your calendar in terms of what you would do, what you're going to provide for your clients and more? Well, immediate, um, you know, this summer uh, I'll be involved in two some, with some very good speakers ah. uh, inside of a summit that we're going to be doing in the month of August. So please look forward to that. I'll be putting more word out around that. Yeah. 
uh, have some amazing speakers that's lining up, uh, and I'm blessed to be part of that whole cohort of different sure. speakers and authors uh, sure. who's going to be making things available uh, for our audiences in order to take part in so they can actually go to their next. And so that's immediate what I'm looking forward to. Uh, the course that I'm creating also is another um, mm -hmm. that I'm going to be uh, doing, um, uh, doing some things, uh, taking on a cohort of uh, doing some group coaching kind of things for my business uh, because I do love coaching. I have, listen, when you have over 30 years of getting results, um with it people it, it you just know at this point you just know what works i mean you know if you don't have a coach something's wrong sure. i have a coach yes. i have a matter of fact i have multiple coaches yes. uh and that's because it just shortcuts everything like i don't i don't have another 40 30 40 years to kind of figure stuff sure. out i'm gonna go to someone who can actually get me the results that i need and cut that time in half if yeah. not more and that's what you go to a coach for. So these things I'm wrapping up to, to do a lot more of those sort of works for my people. Oh, fantastic. So you'll be in the summer school program. And as we lean into it right now, we're going to be working with these entrepreneurs. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Which is outstanding. Outstanding. So at this time, I would love for you to share uh, some words of wisdom uh, with our listeners uh, something that they can hold on to, not only from this live recording here, but also on the archive, leave them something that they can lean into moving forward to help them out. Okay, Thank great. You. So what I would like to do, Paul, is I would like to actually share something from my first book. Fantastic. Uh, you already have it. And one of the things I really want to share, I actually have this here. Uh, we always deal with fear. And this book, deals with the things that we deal with out of life. So here's some things to kind of deal with fear. Now, one of the things I want to kind of pre-reference, uh, prerequisite, preface this around fear is that people act like it's not supposed to be there. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> but it's real. Let's, let's just all acknowledge fear is supposed to be there. You have yeah. millions and millions of years of yeah. your brain trying to run away from danger and it That's is cool. hardwired in there. So it's not going to go anywhere. So exactly. if it's not going to go anywhere, then the next thing to do is like, well, how do we deal with that then if it's not going to go anywhere? So I just want to share really quickly the five most, um, some things around here uh, that you can actually ask yourself uh, about fears. And, and that is, what are your fears that are keeping you from fulfilling your destiny? What meaning do you give your fears? Mm -hmm. How will you acknowledge your fears and what new thoughts can you put in place and what actions, talk about that action, Paul, there it is, what is an action that you can take immediately to get past the fear? So here are some things I want you to do when it comes to identifying the fear. I want you to establish what your fear is keeping you from accomplishing, because most of the time, if we're not accomplishing our, grow, our goals, that is because of fear, 99% of the time. The other thing, number two, is to get present. Discover the meaning you are attaching to your fear. Yes. Discover the meaning that you, because we all make up stories. What is the meaning that you're giving your fear? Is it that I'm not good enough? I'll be judged. What are those things? I want you to acknowledge it because what we know is what you, you know, whatever you, it, you know, resist, persist. Correct. So you want to acknowledge that fear. I actually talk to my fear, Paul. Oh, okay. So whenever you resist, you know, it or persist, it is a na it's natural for human beings to experience fear. That's first of all. And you don't have to act like you are not supposed to feel things. So you want to acknowledge and say, thank you for sharing. When yeah. fear pops up, I said, oh, wow, that's that fear. I'm not going to I'm, I'm not going to pretend you don't exist. Thank you for sharing. Thank exactly. you. Thank you for being with me because you're going to be the fuel that I need to perform at my top peak. Absolutely. And the, the, the other thing is to replace your fantasy, replace your fear with a new fantasy or thought. Yes. Right. Create something new because we have the power of creation. And as soon as you do that, you have to immediately take action. Take action now. 
and take action consistent to what it is you want to accomplish. So once you begin to take those consistent actions and you plan that out, Paul, that becomes your rocking, exciting life. Yes. With fear being the fuel to everything that you need to perform at your highest levels. Right. And so one can live their best life possible uh, going through this transformational period, being in the now and also continuing to uh, when you you're no longer resisting mm. the fear. But what you're doing is you're manifesting a new thing. Yes. In your life. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. That, that is fantastic. And I really want the audience to really lean into this because what Rovan has just provided is some self-care. It's some self-care. Uh, it helps move us from where we are now to where we want to be and where we really deserve to be, yes. which is in a better place yes. uh, with our lives. So that that is fantastic. And uh, I just really want to thank you for that. And uh, I want to share just a little bit more uh, about um, Rovan. And uh, he's done some uh, amazing things and he continues to this day. He has a, a beautiful family. Uh, he resides in the New Jersey, New York area, has a wonderful wife and daughter and uh, his daughter who recently just graduated from college. So congratulations to you and your family. Thank you. Uh, Rovan, he continues to inspire and empower, leaving an unforgettable mark on the lives of those he touches through his coaching and through his works. And again, I really want to share uh, your book uh, with people. So I'm going to put that back up. And again, go to Amazon.com, type in Rovan Dion. You'll see his books there. Uh, not only Zero to Hero in Real Estate, which is his most recent, which is a bestseller, but his other bestsellers, you already have it, and a So Hum a Grateful Journal. And so uh, that's something we want you to do, but go go there and get books, get cases of schools, get these books. <laughs> <laughs> I cases mean, of <laughs> listen, especially if you love journaling uh, yeah. for, for, our, for our young people, uh, this book, Paul, this is, this book here is, is, I tell you, it is, it is one of the things that's really amazing. Uh -huh. And, and even in this book, I deal with, I have all these different quotes and here is one that I want to okay. just see. It says, um, when you are grateful, Yes. Fear disappears yes. and abundance appears. And that is none other than my teacher, Tony uh, Robbins. All right, Tony. In fact, he's going to be in Washington, D.C. Uh, pretty soon. Yes. And, uh, he's doing a program. He's kind of touring the country, but he'll be here very soon. So uh, I may just get down there to see him because I used to go to the uh, Get Motivated conferences. And uh, Zig Ziglar was my guy, so I would go see yes. Zig and, and everyone and uh, just had a great time. And I know with Tony, he's the tops, tops in the country and probably in the world as well. So Yeah, August is going to be a busy month because I also have a, a, a virtual a yeah. three day immersion. <laughs> it's like uh, immersed. Tony is in, intense. Uh, three day immersion and also in August that I'm doing with Tony as well. OK. Fantastic. So what I want you to know now, audience, those listening on archive, is that I want you to go to Apple Podcasts, rate and review this episode of Wealth Academy Podcast, episode 262 with Rovan Dion, uh, three-time number one bestseller, international bestselling author. And uh, get out there and put in some positive comments with that five-star rating. We really appreciate it. And also encourage your family, your friends, and your colleagues to also listen to their a particular episode. And you have ways to uh, get in touch with uh, Rovan as well. And uh, so I thank all of you for this today. We have a, another episode coming up very soon. But Rovan, thank you so much for being our honored guest today. And, and again, I want to just share his book from zero to hero in real estate investing. Uh, remember, this is the key. It's all about your wealth legacy. Yes. And wealth not only includes money, but your health and for your lifestyle as well. So how you think, that's what it's all about, how you think. So uh, this is going to end this particular episode with Rovan. I'm pretty sure he's going to be coming back on. 
I'm looking forward to his uh, fiction book coming out. Uh, uh, I, I want to be there when his movie is, is in the theaters, when it's on television and comic books and everything else. So, Rovan, you have a great day. And to our listening audience, thank you so much. And I'll see you on the next episode of Wealth Academy Podcast. This is Paul Van saying to you, have a great day. Have a great day, Rovan. All right. Thank you all.